Welcome to First Baptist Church of Gaston. We are so glad you are with us. We are looking forward to what God is going to do in 2024. Here's what's coming up in the next few weeks. Our 2024 preaching plans will be available for pickup today in the Welcome Center. Make sure that you plan on grabbing a copy. Our Grief Share group will be meeting today, January 7th at 3 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. If you have joined or would like to join this group, feel free to contact Paul Abrams with any questions. If you are interested in learning more about our church, we have a new members class that will be starting January 14th at 9.45 a.m. during the Sunday school hour. This will take place in the Fellowship Hall. Make sure that you sign up in the Welcome Center. Motivational Mondays will be starting back. The first meeting will be January 15th at 1 o'clock p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This is a weekly gathering and will take place every Monday. Bill Guy will be facilitating this study of God's Word. Women on Mission will be meeting Monday, January 15th at 6 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Please bring an appetizer to share. We will have a time of devotion and missions. Ladies, you don't want to miss this time of fellowship. Please see Melissa Goff, Margie Risch, or myself with any questions. On Sunday, January 28th at 6 o'clock here at First Baptist Church of Gaston, Pastor Chris Terry will be ordained. Please make plans on attending this special night for Pastor Chris. Brotherhood will be meeting Tuesday, January 30th at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. There will be a message and a meal will be served. Please make sure that you plan on attending. See Chris Vadrine if you have any questions. The men's prayer group will be meeting every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. in the room across from the library. All men are encouraged to attend to pray for our church services. Please contact Charles Burton if you have any questions. We are looking forward to celebrating the new year with you. Be sure to check out Facebook, Instagram, and our website for updates on all of these events. We are First Baptist Church of Gaston, the caring place that gathers, grows, and goes, all for the glory of God. Well, hello, my name is Pastor Brady, and you have found, successfully found, our online streaming right here on our Facebook page. Or maybe you're watching on our website. No matter where you're watching from, we want to thank you for tuning in for today's live worship service from right here at the Caring Place that gathers, grows, and goes all for the glory of God. We hope and pray you enjoy your worship experience today. So let us know in the comment section below if you're on Facebook that you're here. Hit that share button and grab your Bible and get ready to worship and praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, during this worship service today. Thank you, and we're glad you're here. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Yes. As you can see, my picture earlier, I will be eating the church later on. So uh, <laughs> it's good to see everyone here this morning. I hope everyone had a great New Year's. I'm excited to see what God's going to do this year. How about you? Yes. Oh, my goodness. That was terrible. I know. That was very tepid. I'm excited to see what God's going to do in 2024. What about you? Yes. Yeah, that's much better. All right. Just a quick reminder about our box behind in the sanctuary. Also, for those that are visiting today, we have a connect card in the pew in front of you. If you're a visitor, a first time visitor, please fill that out so we can get a record of your visit today. And uh, we're going to stand right now and we're going to do our scripture for today. All right. We're going to be in Second Timothy. Everybody stand if you're able. What a great crowd today. Very, very, very good to see everyone. Second Timothy 2, 3, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Second Timothy 2, 3. What a great word to start off this year. All right. Onward, Christian soldiers.
talking about being committed today and this song is called the commission so this is a challenge to all of us from Jesus to be about his father's work
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now and we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us today, Father, to be in your house. Thank you for another year, Father, that you've given us, another opportunity to go tell the world. And I just pray, Father, if there's anybody within the sound of my voice this morning that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that this day, that this year would be that time, Father. And I just pray, Father, for the offerings and tithes that we receive today, Father, as well. We just pray that you would use them for your kingdom. We just pray for our pastor today as he stands behind the cross, Father, and brings your word today. I pray that you would be high and lifted up, Father, today. That Pastor Brady wouldn't be seen, Father, but you would be seen, Father, and heard. Again, Father, we thank you for who you are and what you're doing amongst us today. And we thank you for what you're going to do now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. When my heart is racing deep inside my chest When I'm underneath the weight of anxiousness When my fear is raging that I can't catch my breath
I'm a child of the mountain mover. I have a hope and I have a future. I'm a child of the mountain mover. Amen. Great time of worship today. If you're a child of the oh, let me get the mic there. If you're a child of the mountain mover, would you just say amen? Amen. Amen. I should have it on now, Adam. Anyway, well, good morning. So glad to have you with us today and see so many different visitors that are here. And if you're visiting with us, uh, as Pastor Chris already said, I want to reiterate, we want to invite you to fill out a Connect card so that we can have a record of your attendance uh, with us today. Uh, when I was an associate pastor at Hillcrest Baptist Church in Williamston, my pastor, his name is Larry Baldwin, he talked at, uh, spoke at our Valentine's banquet last year, and it was a wonderful time. And so uh, when he did that, um, I served with him for almost two years as his associate pastor. And one thing that he did every year that encouraged me was he would cast the vision for the church on the first Sunday of every year. And as I, the first year I was with him, I asked him, I said, well, you know, what book are you going to begin preaching through or whatever the case was? Were you going to preach on? He said, well, I'm going to do a different kind of sermon. I'm going to cast the vision. I looked at him. I said, what in the world are you talking about? And he said, well, and he quoted Proverbs 28, verse 19, or excuse me, 29, verse 18, which says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And he encouraged me that whenever God allowed me to pastor, to always use the first Sunday of the year to cast the vision for the year. And all throughout the year to point back to this Sunday and reiterate some of the things that we talked about on this day. And so that's what I want to do this morning is I want to cast the vision. And, and how I do that is every year, I know we have many that are visiting today. So if you are visiting, this is a little bit different than normal. Usually we go verse by verse through books of the Bible, expository preaching. We're still going to have expository preaching today. But we're going to focus on one word, and that will be our word of the year. And as you can see, it's on my shirt. You can pre-order one of the, these if you'd like to in the Welcome Center. But the word of the year this year is committed. And as you can see, the end of the word is in parentheses. You cannot be committed until you commit to Christ. And I think that needs to be reiterated. So I'm going to preach a sermon this morning entitled Committed from Psalms 37, verses 1 through 5. If you have a copy of God's word, just turn in the middle. You should turn right to Psalms 37, and we'll be diving into that in just a moment. But a sermon in a sentence this morning is this. We can see uh, that we can be more committed to all that God wants to do this year by trusting in him, delighting in him, and committing to him fully. Now, I might sound like a broker, broken record, but I'm going to keep repeating this. 2023 was a really great year. In the life of our church, it was remarkable. In 2023, we were able to add 44 people into our church. 24 of those were new believers by baptism. Our missions giving has increased by $6,000 in our annual budget, which is very important. We gave the most money in our missions offerings that we have in a very long time. Our morning worship, midweek worship, and Sunday school all saw significant increases. We also put a big focus on discipleship as we started D groups last year, and that will continue in the spring, so you'll hear more about that in a few weeks. And for the second straight year, we added another full-time staff member. The year before, we had a full-time secretary. Now we have a full-time associate pastor. So God has blessed in so many ways. When I became the pastor here on February the 21st of 2021, did you know that there was 2,200, 2,200 Southern Baptist churches in the state of South Carolina? In 2021 did you know that as of yesterday there are now 2015 Southern Baptist churches in the state of South Carolina that means by the time that I've been here almost three years 185 Southern Baptist churches in our state 
have clothes. That might not seem like a big deal to you, but when we see what God is doing here, and we see what's happening in other places, we need to stop and give him praise. Why don't you do that right now? Why don't you do that? And we want to pray that just as God has anointed our church for such a time as this, we pray that his hand will stay upon us. And how we handle the ministry and the influence that he's given us, I believe has a direct correlation with his anointing. We need to make sure that we're taking advantage of the influence that God has given us in our community. Now, 23 was great, but did you know that I believe 2024 can be even better? And that's why I want to preach this message this morning. I want to show you how. Now, I, I'm going to be real honest with you. I, I always am. I'm going to be real blunt with you this morning on some things that I need to address as we cast the vision. Some things that we as a church, we need to improve on. Are we doing great? Yes, we are. But could we do better? Yes, we can. Because I have no reason, no, I, I should not be your pastor if I can't correct you. Right? If your pastor can't correct you, then he shouldn't be your pastor. So I'm going to do that this morning through God's word as we look at it. As far as the word of the year goes, you might remember in 2022, God gave me the word of the year as together. Y'all might remember that. In 2023, the word was delivered, right? And it was awesome how God used that vision to deliver so many people from death unto life. But this year, I want us to be committed. And there's several reasons why I think God laid that on my heart. And I'll get to those in a little bit. But y'all, we got to be more committed. God's given us such an incredible church family. If we only could see all that he's doing, we would be so much more committed than we are right now. So if you have a copy of God's Word, we're going to read Psalms 37, verses 1 through 5. If you're physically able, if you would, please stand and honor the reading of the Word of God. By the way, this is one of my favorite psalms. I love this psalm. Hannah's laughing because every week I say I love every passage. But anyway, <laughs> verse 1, Fret not yourself because of evildoers, be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Verse 5, I want you to memorize that this year. That's our verse for the vision this year. Father God, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to open up your word. Father God, I pray that you would move in a powerful way as your word is preached and that you would penetrate our hearts and convict us, Father, of how we need to be more, more committed to you so that more souls can be saved because of the work and the ministry of First Baptist Church. We pray all this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, you may be seated. Now, let me give you a little bit of background just in case you're taking notes. And if, you're, uh, if you wanted a physical copy of the preaching plan, you could have picked that up this morning. You can pick that up as you leave in the Welcome Center. But you can put notebook paper in there. That's why we did binders so that it can assist you in taking notes during the service. So if you'd like to do that, feel free. But the context of Psalms 37 is this, like many of the Psalms, was written by King David. And because of verse 25, if you flip over in your Bible to verse 25, it shows that we believe that David was a little bit older by the time that he wrote this psalm. Now, I don't want anybody to throw rocks at me, but I believe that as you get older, you should mature. Now, not everybody does, but as you get older, you should be maturing. You should be growing, right? Look at verse 25. This is what David said. I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Now, we're only studying the first five verses this morning, but I do think we do need to look at the context. The main question that David addresses in Psalms 37 is something that some of you have asked me before. This is the question that David obviously must have gotten that he addresses here in Psalms 37. Why do godless people prosper? 
Another way you could ask this is why do non-believers, why are their businesses successful? Why are their families seem like they have no problems? And that question is asked all the time. In other words, why do our unbelieving neighbors and co-workers live wicked lives but seem to have the most fun, drive the fancy cars, and live in the biggest homes? Why I, as a believer, struggle to make it paycheck to paycheck? Why do the wicked prosper is what David is asking here. Now, we don't know the exact circumstance that this psalm was written under. I want to remind you, when it comes to David, most of the time, something happened in his life which caused him to write a psalm, right? And so you see that through First and Second Samuel. That's one reason why we're going through that. But Warren Wiersbe said this, Perhaps this psalm was part of David's preparation of Solomon for the throne. So maybe this is at the end of David's time, and he's preparing Solomon to take it. Now, when studying Psalms 37 in the Hebrew, what is so fun about this psalm, at least for me, which is ironic because I'm not using alliteration this morning, uh, but what is so interesting about Psalms 37 in the Hebrew is that the entire psalm is in acrostic form, which means that every line in the Hebrew starts with the same Hebrew letter. So I guess you could say alliteration is biblical, right? (laughs) Anyway, although we are not the nation of Israel, how often do we fret over things that God already has control of? How often do we fret over things that God already has in the palm of his hand? And you spend minutes, hours, days, months, years worrying about something that God has had in his hand since the beginning of time. If you don't hear anything I say, can you hear this? Let it go. Let it go. You weren't meant to bury all that weight. Let me ask you this question this morning. How does this passage show us that we need to be committed to the Lord and all that he wants to do in 2024? Number one, Trust in the Lord. You say, preacher, that's so simple. Well, why don't we start doing it? Why don't we actually start trusting in him? Look at verse 1. I love verse 1. Fret not yourself because of evil doers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. David starts this psalm off while reminding the people of Israel to not worry about what other people are doing. And we're Baptists, so I def- this definitely applies to Baptists. <laughs> Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. While Facebook's a wonderful thing to share our Bible reading and to do all the things we do, some of y'all be looking up what other people are doing in the church. Don't laugh. I know y'all do it. But in my own life and ministering to other people, I've learned that comparison is a trap that Satan loves to use. If he can get you to compare, he can get you to doubt. And doubting is the opposite of trusting, right? And we need to trust him. And when looking at this psalm through the lens of the Old Testament, we need to understand that the theological, if you're taking notes, write this down, the theological foundation uh, that is found in the covenant that God made with Israel is found in uh, Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 27 through 30. And those texts show us that God owned the land that they lived on as long as they would obey him, they could enjoy the blessings of the land. As long as they were obedient, the land would bring blessings unto them, right? And so, but if Israel were to disobey the Lord and go the opposite way, he would uh, chastise the land, right? With drought, famine, invasions, all those different things. And you see through the history of Israel, when they obeyed God, the land... It was a blessing to them. When they disobeyed God, especially if you're doing the blue reading plan, you're going to see all throughout the Old Testament how many times they disobey God and they have a a fight, right? They have a battle. They have a war. You may be starting this new year wondering why God is not punishing those around you. You say, God, I'm going to church. God, I'm serving in this ministry. God, I'm reading my Bible. And God, I'm giving to your local church. 
but that guy that I work with doesn't go to church, doesn't know the Lord, and every weekend he's living his life and he's having a grand old time. And he's sending me pictures and videos. And God, I don't understand why he's doing so good because he just got the promotion. So you might be wondering that. Well, here's the problem. You're looking at what others have instead of what God has given you. Instead of trusting and, and saying, you know what, God, I might not have what they have, but I have what you want me to have, right? I'm trusting in you. Let me remind you, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Too many people are trying to play God in 2024. Stop playing God and trust God. Now, this is different than my normal style, but I'm going to take a little bit of a topical approach today, so forgive me of that. We'll get back to the, my normal style next week. But let me give you three ways I think that God has let me know that our congregation needs to trust God. And by the way, I've been preparing this message for like eight months. God's been working on my heart with this. Trust God with the future. Trust God with the future. Everything that this year has to offer. David begins verse 1 and 2, Fret not yourself. You can't trust God with the future of 2024 if you are still worrying about the past of 2023. How can you trust God with 2024 if you're thinking about everything that happened in 2023? You can't be committed if your mind's not committed, if you're still worried about what happened or didn't happen. That's what scares me about the church today is we can't tell you three Bible verses, but we can tell you what Shirley Sue said 30 years ago. Isn't that sad, though? That we can't tell you three Bible verses, but we can tell you how somebody, quote-unquote, hurt our feelings? Boy, if Hannah and I wrote a book about how many times our feelings get hurt, it'd be like that big. But you know what her motto is? Notice I didn't say mine. It's her motto. I'm learning. Move on. Act like it never happened. Still love them even though they bite you. That's what we're called to do, right? Trust in the Lord with the future. Look at the word study here. The word fret is translated from the Hebrew word hurrah, H-A-R-A-H, hurrah. And what is so interesting about this verb in the Hebrew is that it literally means to be angry, aroused, and to burn with anger. Literally means to burn in rage and in anger. Now, notice that it says, fret not. So, hurrah, and then it has a negative word in the Hebrew, which is translated not. Which literally means, to be translated, is that King David is telling them to take a chill pill. That's literally what that means. Chill out, right? So, if you're using a word like hurrah, that means anger and rage and, and fire and all this kind of stuff, and then you add a negative right after it, you're saying the exact opposite, right? So David is wanting them to chill out. It's going to be okay. Warren Wiersbe said, when we see evil in the world, we ought to feel a holy anger at sin. But to envy the wicked only leads to fretting, and fretting leads to anger. His argument is that the wicked and temporary are temporary and will one day be gone. You are not responsible to God for the actions of others. But you are responsible to God for how you respond to their actions. If somebody comes up and hits you in the face, you are responsible for how you respond to them. When we fret and worry about the mess that the world is in, we're taking time away from trusting God and that he's in control. I don't do this much, but I just saw Ed Dorowski. And Ed Dorowski is a great depiction of a man that has trusted in God no matter what has come his way. He's had a lot of stuff happen, Brother Ed, but he hadn't stopped trusting God, right? Don't fret. Don't worry. Sometimes you just got to take a chill pill. I love what Graham Scroge said concerning this. Evidently, we are in the greatest danger of doing that, of getting into a heat about the moral mysteries around us. The moral mysteries. Some of us are so mad about the government. We're so mad about this. We're so mad about that. But we're not mad about our own sin. We don't do anything about it. Trust God with the future. Here's the other one. Trust God with your finances. I had a conversation 
with my father-in-law over Christmas, and we were talking about the economy. The economy's getting bad. Can we agree with that? Can we agree that our Walmart pickup order, Hannah and I were talking about this last night, from the time we got married to now, it has, I mean, it's, and we're buying the same stuff, if not less. Y'all, it's crazy how much things are costing, and, and, and it's, it's crazy. But the Lord reminded me in preparing this message that I need to trust God with everything, not just the parts that I don't want Him to have, everything. Psalms 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Do good. Do good even if nobody else is doing good. You do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. If you want to have a year where you give God maximum glory, then you, it needs to start with how you handle the future, but it also needs to start with your finances. You can say you love God, but y'all all know the phrase, put your money where your mouth is, right? The word trust is found 85 times in the Bible. The Hebrew word for trust here is bata, and it literally means to rely on, to put one's weight on. I don't know if you have seen this account on Facebook, but there's this page on Facebook called Historical Photos of the Appa, Appalachian South. Appalachian, Appalachian, however you want to say it. And I follow them because I like history. And then recently, they've been posting photos from the 1800s and 1900s of these people that had these clothes on that they've been wearing for a month. And all the work they did just to have supper. And that was nearly 100 years ago. Oh, how far we've gotten from our roots, right? And in a lot of those homes, you could find a Bible on the table. Do we find that today? We need to trust God in every area. Charles Spurgeon said this, Faith cures fretting. Sight is cross-eyed and views things only as they seem, hence her envy. Faith has clear optics to behold things as they really are, hence her peace. Maybe you trusted God in 2023. Guess what? Congratulations. I'm proud of you. But don't stop trusting him in 2024. Don't stop trusting him that he's still God and that he's still in control. Here's a question you can ask regarding your finances. How can you be a better steward of what God has given you? Maybe, maybe we're having economic uh, inflation because God needs to teach us as God's people how we need to be better stewards, not just giving him money, but how to make our dollar go farther, right? Hannah and I grew up in the whatever you call that thing that happened in 08. I remember that. Many of you do too. If you aren't giving to the Lord what is rightfully his, you need to start doing that today. Trust God with the future. Trust God financially. Trust God with your family. I know that sitting in this congregation today that there are parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles who are genuinely concerned for your children. You might be concerned in the world that they're going to live in. Maybe you've recently sent a child off to college or you're going to do that in just a few short months. I think we have a lot of high school seniors graduating this year, so a lot of parents will be doing that soon. Or maybe your child is lost and does not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Maybe your child has strayed far from the narrow path. Maybe your child's not in church today. Whatever the case may be, many of us, if not all of us, have family members that we could potentially worry about. Amen? We've all got family members that we're concerned about, that we pray about, that we flood our prayer journals with. Notice in this verse, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Trust in the Lord, do good. Bloom where you're planted. Don't always be ready for the next big thing. Sometimes your family needs you right there. Right there to be there for them. Right? To show them the way. Right? And you might have even brought them up in church, but they need that reminder. David wanted the people of Israel to stay in the land that God had given them, to trust that he was going to provide for all their needs. How can we do good for God if we aren't casting our burdens on him? How can we trust God if you aren't regularly starting your day off with, God, I'm worried about X, Y, and Z, but I'm giving it all in the whole alphabet straight to you. And as soon as I'm tempted to think about it, Take it away, right? 
Let me remind you of Philippians 4, 6 through 7. You know this. Do not be anxious about anything. Anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you can't commit to everything that God wants to do because you haven't trusted. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Number one, trust in the Lord. Number two, delight in the Lord. Look at verse four. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, verse four is an example in the Psalms of what we call a psalm of ascent. And what that means is we start off in verse one with the command to fret not, right? So we start off with that command. And then we go to delighting in the Lord, right? So the psalm starts off here and it ascends, right? It's going up. It's, it's making us feel better, so to speak, that we do need to delight in the Lord. I need to ask you this. What are you delighting in today? I guarantee you we could figure it out. We could go to your online banking and see what you spend the most money on. We could go to your Facebook account and see what you post about the most. I'll give you some things to think about. Maybe you delight in your money. Maybe you delight in your car, your job, your favorite Christmas present. Let me tell you about my favorite Christmas present, if you don't mind. Okay, nobody minds. All right. So, you know, Christmas is wonderful. It's a great time. Well, Hannah and I did a thing this year where we said, you know, we'll get each other something, but it has to be under the $50 cap, you know, something small, whatever. And so, uh, you know, we, we did that and everything, and she gave me mine earlier this week. I tell you what, I love that thing. Let me tell you what it is. I don't have a picture of it because I wasn't going to say this. But I've got a hat that has my dog's face on it. <laughs> I mean, I love it. Okay, I love it. It looks just like him. I love that thing. I mean, it, it's awesome. I mean, I might even wear that one to Carolina games now instead of Carolina hat. I don't know. But man, I, I, that was one of my favorite Christmas presents. Maybe you delight in your clothes or maybe you delight in yourself. We know some people that love a whole lot of them. <laughs> right? And we've been guilty of that before too, right? So let me ask you, are you delighting in the Lord? David knew that the people of Israel couldn't be delighting in God because they were too worried about what other nations were doing. How could they take the time and delight in God if they were too envious and worried about the other nations? And sometimes we are the same way. We're trying to keep up with the Joneses that we forget that the Lord should be our supreme delight, right? Day and night, Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, bad men delight in carnal objects. Do not envy them if they are allowed to take their fill in such vain idols. Look thou to thy better delight and fill thyself to the full with the sublimer portion. It's possible for lost people to have delight, but only saved people can have true delight. Only saved people can have delight that will never run dry. Let me give you three ways that I think the Lord wants us to delight in him this year. And these will go pretty quick. We need, as a church family, we need to delight where God is. Not where we want God to be, but delight where God is and where he's working. And I think God is working in this place. So we need to be here with him. We need to be a part of what he's doing here. One time that people have a hard time delighting in the Lord is that they want to delight in what they want God to be instead of what God currently is. Some of you, God has already given you a task to do in the church, and, and you say, well, I've got this task, but I really want that one. Delight where God is. Delight where God has put you. Delight when whatever he has given you. Maybe it's a position you don't like. You say, God, I don't want to do this. But he's put you there for a reason and a purpose. Stop looking for God where you want him to be and start searching where he already is. Delight in where God is. Number two, delight in what God wants to do. I personally believe that there's so much that God wants to do this year in the life of our church. But let me tell you a problem that I think that I have identified that the Lord has revealed to me. 
We're not committed enough. We care way too much about other things than we do about the things of God. I'm not asking you to get offended. If you are, oh well. But we've got to do a better job. Let me tell you something. We have four paid staff members here. Pastor, associate pastor, minister of music, and a secretary. Obviously, we can't do it all, so we have volunteers. Being a volunteer is not an excuse for mediocrity. Just because you're a volunteer, just because you do it, doesn't mean, oh, I checked the box off, I did it. Do it well. Everything that we do should be done well, and it should be done for the glory of God. You say, well, I'm a volunteer. I'm not getting paid. Well, I'd hate to get to heaven and God say, I gave you a position in the church, and you didn't give your all in it. I'm afraid, and, and I'm just being honest, that we have too many volunteers in ministry at our church that are just doing things at the level of mediocrity. Because I've heard this way too many times. That's the way we've always done it. Just because that's the way we've always done it doesn't mean that's the way God wants to do it in 2024. I hope you realize that the people walking on the earth today are different than the people that walked the earth 40 years ago. We've got a whole new generation of young people that need to hear the gospel, and we're going to have to go about it different ways than we've done before. Right? And that means that more souls are going to be saved. We never change the message, but you are going to have to change the method. Right? There's nothing wrong with changing the method as long as you never change the message. But God has just burdened me as we were at the beach and we were having such a great time. God told me, I want to do so much in this church, but too many people are okay with mediocrity. I can't take y'all to the next level until you're willing to take it a level up. So if you lead a ministry, what does that mean? You need to pray, plan, prep, and prepare. Please do not count on the staff to do your ministry for you. And please do not come to us and say, well, y'all are paid, I'm not. Don't say that. Because God's given you a ministry to do for a reason. And if you're not willing to give God the best in your ministry, let someone else do it. Okay? So we need to, we need to delight in what God wants to do. And there are needs in our church. We have visitation needs. We have nursery needs. We have feeding team needs. We have children's worship, youth. Wherever the ministry need is, we should delight in what God wants to do in that area. If God calls you to serve in children's worship, don't complain. Be happy that he's allowed you to serve, right? Delight in why God wants to do it. Delight in where God is, delight in what God wants to do, but delight in why. Here is the reason. God does not want you to serve so that you can get you, and, and here's why I don't believe in name tags, by the way. I, I don't know if y'all noticed, but we don't give name tags to deacons or staff. or us. I don't believe in that, okay? I just don't. If you believe in it, that's fine. I don't. The reason is that's not why you do it. Let me tell you why you do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. That is why we serve. That is why we do what we do at First Baptist Gaston. is so that God will get all the glory. So that God will get all the praise. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I want you to think about some of the ministry that you did in 2023. Let me ask this rhetorically. Could you have done better? We all could have done better, right? I could have done better. You could have done better. We can do better together, and that's what we should be committed to doing this year. And I want to remind you that if we don't give God glory in our service and in our worship, the very rocks will cry out. You say, how do you know that? Psalms, you ready? Or excuse me, not Psalms. Luke 1940, this is what Jesus said. I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And one of my grandfather's battle cries in ministry was that if we as the church don't worship, the rocks outside will. And shame on us if that happens. And let me tell you something. We got close in 2023 to some dry spots where I thought the rocks might cry out because we weren't. We were crying out complaints, but we weren't crying out praise. And there's a big difference. 
There's so many lost people saturated in this community that we can reach. If we'll delight in God and delight in what God wants to do. Now it's getting hot in here, right? Trust in the Lord, delight in the Lord, commit to the Lord. Look at verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. If you can't tell by now, this is where our word of the year came from. And this is the word that I felt like the Lord told me to choose this year. I want to invite you to pre-order one of these shirts. You can do that in the Welcome Center. But I can't tell you how many kingdom things that God wants to do here. And one reason that he hasn't done them is because we've shown that we're not committed. You guys think you've seen a move of God? We haven't seen anything yet compared to what I think we can see. The potential here is limitless. It really is. And I'm committed to stay here as long as God lets Hannah and I stay here because I want to see what God wants to do here. But we've got to actually do it. And you've got to step up and we've got to commit. Let me tell you, my heart was broken earlier this year. And I said I wasn't going to do this because I'm not trying to make anybody, anybody feel bad. And I'm not. But my heart was broken over the fact that, you know, we had a D group. And my wife had eight people signed up and nobody came anymore. Parents, you care about your children. Bring them to church. Make them come. Whether they like it or not. I'm so glad my mom made me come when I got in that phase where I said, well, I'm not going to church. And they'll blame it on anything. But we need to come. You need to bring your children to God's house. Right? Whether they like it or not, whether they're there or not, you need to make sure you bring them. Because we got a lot of volunteers that give a lot of time. A lot of time. And when you as parents decide, well, I'm just not going to bring the kids today. Well, why not? They said they didn't want to go. Well, if my mom would have listened to me when I said I didn't want to go, I wouldn't be in the pulpit. There you go. The word commit in the English is translated from the very fascinating Hebrew word, galal, which literally means to roll off one's burden. So when we commit to God, we're taking off our burdens and putting them on him and putting on his mission on our shoulders. God, Warren Wearsby said, God doesn't take our burden so that we can become irresponsible, so that we can serve him better. You need to roll off whatever burdens, cares, and worries that you brought into 2024. I truly believe that God wants to do so much, but you've got to commit. Let me show you four areas as I close that we need to commit to God in our church this year. And if your seed hadn't got yet, it will here. Number one, commit to Christ. You can't be committed to the church or the community or Christ-honoring preaching if you are not first committed in a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are not saved, none of what I'm getting ready to talk to you about matters. You need to accept Christ first. And then you could be committed to the things that we're going to discuss. But if you are committed to Christ, then what I'm getting ready to say does apply to you. Number one, we need to commit to the church. Hebrews 10, 25. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. As your pastor, it is my desire that we become more faithfully committed to attending church. Now, a lot of y'all are here, here today. It's a great attendance day, and I'm thankful for that. Is it going to be the same on the second Sunday of the year that it is the first? Or when we get in the dog days of summer? Or when we get into whatever day you want to think of, are we still going to be committed? Not just Sundays, but on Wednesdays as well. Let me encourage you with this. Did you know that the Wednesday night service is a preaching service just like this one? So if you choose to only come on Sundays, you're coming to half of the sermons a month. Which means by the end of the year, you're coming to half of the sermons a year. You're missing out on how God wants to teach you. You're missing out on God's blessings and God's word. And, and, and as the under-shepherd, it really burdens my heart beyond belief when sheep do not come to feeding times. And I, I don't call it a mistake. Some people do, but I, I text when people miss. 
and sometimes people don't like that. I'm not trying to make you feel bad when I text you. I'm trying to let you know as the under-shepherd shepherd, that I care for your soul, and I want you to be here. That's all I'm implying. There's no other source of that text. It's just, I miss you, I love you, I want you back. I want you back with God's people. Because if I didn't text you, wouldn't that mean I didn't care? Partly. But I do care. So you need the church, but the church also needs you. Earlier this week, I asked our church secretary, Miss Velvet, to find the total number of inactive and active members in our church. Now, the number is not as high as you would think because last year uh, we went through and we cleaned it out a little bit. And what I mean by that is anybody that had passed away that was still on there, we cleaned a lot of that out and, uh, and looked at all that. There were 876 names on the piece of paper that she printed out. 876. We'd have to have three sanctuaries of this size to fit 876 people. Okay? Now, of those 876, these, this number did not come from her. I came up with this number. My approximate guess is I consider an active member somebody that comes once to twice a month, either on Sundays or Wednesdays. An active member once or twice a month. My estimation is that we have 370 active members, roughly. Now, kind of some of the number, kind of how I got that was I did go through four months. If I've seen you within four months, we kind of do it that way or whatever. But 370, so that means that 42% of the 876 actually come regularly. Well, let's, let's go even farther. Out of the 370, only 50% of those are here four times a month. And out of the 370, my, according to, and this is all something that I've worked on, my approximation is that 100 of that 370 are here Sundays and Wednesdays every week. So less than 14% of our role is here on Sundays and Wednesdays. Shame on us. Shame on us. Shame on us when we decide to sleep in. Shame on us when we decide that something else is a little bit more important than come worshiping in God's house. And, and online is a great tool, but online is not meant to be a crutch. Online is there if you're on vacation. Online is there if you're sick and you physically can't come. But online is not there to say, well, I watched the sermon, preacher. I'm not asking you to watch the sermon. I'm asking you to come be a part of God's people. I'm asking you to come fellowship. I'm asking you to come serve. I'm asking you that when somebody hurts in the hospital like Chris Pound in room 7135 at Lexington, that you pray for them, but you also go see them, right? I'm asking you to hurt when other people hurt. I'm asking you to give. I'm asking you to be a part of what God's doing. Not just watch a sermon, but live out a sermon. You say, oh, that was a great sermon. Did you change any? <laughs> I don't care if it sounds good or not. If it doesn't cause you to change, I just need to sit down and shut up. Honestly. Are you changing? Are you growing? Just imagine with me for a moment if everybody in our church was 100% committed and 100% sold out. Whoa. You, the search committee told me when I came that they wanted our church to grow. Do you really want the church to grow? Because if you do, then everybody in here will be 100% sold out. If you're a Christian, nobody should ever have to beg you to come to church. Just come be a part of God's family. Right? So commit to the church, commit to Christ, commit to our community. 2023 was a great year. We did a lot of community missions. Our brotherhood did some ramps. Our bereavement team fed so many grieving families. Our WMU made hats for NICU babies as well as sister care, homebound baskets, food donations for the ECC, care items for Robin Nursing Home. 2023 was awesome. 
But there's so many more people that need to be reached with the gospel in 2023 in our community. We can improve in that area. The last thing I want to leave you with is that we need to commit to Christ-honoring preaching. I can't promise you much, but I can promise you I'm going to preach the book. And we're going to do it all year long. Let me show you the four uh, series that we're going to have this year. Next Sunday, we're, we're taking today's message, and next Sunday, we're putting it into real life. Next Sunday, we start a seven-week series on the book of Titus. And the book of Titus is often known as a blueprint for how the New Testament church should operate, right? Paul sent a letter to Titus while Titus was on the island of Crete. And Titus was in charge of getting the New Testament churches to be healthy and to function the way they were meant to. And so the book of Titus walks us through this. So... Each week, during the seven weeks, we're going to look at a message committed to the whatever, whichever that text talks about. Next week, we're going to commit to serving, right? The next week, we're going to commit to the right qualifications for an elder in the church. Every week, we're going to look at a different thing, commit to the bride. Wednesday nights, do not miss out on our Honing In on the Heart series. So, uh, Wednesday night, we kicked off on 1 Samuel, and we'll continue that this Wednesday. We're going to go through First and Second Samuel through the next few years. I tell you what, I think God is going to use that majorly. You need to come be a part of that. Also, at the end of the year after Easter, we're going to take the week after Easter of this year, and we're going to go all the way to Easter of next year going through the book of Mark. And I've entitled that series, Now. Right? So we're going to go through the book of Mark. And then during Christmas time, we'll take a break and we will go through uh, something I've called the history of Christmas hymns. As we look at how the Christmas hymns came from Scripture, who wrote them, why they were written, all of that kind of stuff. We'll look at um, this year. So as we close, you say, well, this morning's sermon was a little bit longer. It was a little longer. But I want to remind you that I report to God, not to you. And so when I lay my head at the pillow, I got to be able to know that I said everything God wanted me to say before I can take a seat. Okay? All right. How does our Heavenly Father want you and I to be more committed in 2024? During this time of invitation, if you've never committed your life to Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time for you to surrender your life to Him. Now is the time to come up to the altar, grab Pastor Chris's hand, grab my hand, grab somebody you know in the congregation, and say, hey, I want to know Jesus. I need to have a relationship with Him. Maybe you want to start off 2024, and you say, hey, I've already been through the new members class. I want to make this church my home. Feel free. Come, be a part of what God is doing here. But if you are saved, and if you are a member here, you need to be committed to what God is doing. And what I want to ask you is how can we all do more in 2024? Everybody together. And if you're not doing much, you need to start with something. You say, well, I don't know what to start with. Well, let's look at the bulletin. <laughs> These announcements have been on here for three months. The Wednesday night cooking teams are looking for more volunteers. If interested, see Eddie Knight right there. Okay? Extended care, we have a full nursery. This is true. Every Sunday and need people to serve. If you're interested to see Lisa Pound or Pastor Chris Terry. Lisa's not here today, so see Pastor Chris. Two needs right there you can fill. And they've been in there for three months. How can we be more committed? It is my challenge to you to fill this altar with prayer to God on how you can be more committed the first Sunday of the year and keep it all throughout the year. Trust in the Lord, delight in the Lord, commit to the Lord. Father God, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity we have to open up Psalms 37 and see from your word how we as a church family need to be more committed to what you're doing in this place on a weekend, week out basis. Lord, if there's anybody here that is not saved, I pray, Lord, that today would be the day of salvation for them. But, Lord, for those that are saved and for those that are members, for those that are believers, God, there is so much more that we can give you that we can hopefully see more people saved. Imagine what we commit to today to do for you this year that we might be able to see fruit of people saved later on in the year based on what we pray today. 
Lord, I ask you bless this year. I ask you grow this church the way you want to, but help us not to just grow numerically, but help us to grow in our hearts, in our discipleship. Because if we're the same person this Sunday that we were last year, that's a problem. I pray, Lord, that you would convict and move in that way. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said. This is Pastor Brady, and thank you for tuning in to today's live worship service here from First Baptist Church of Gaston. Maybe today you feel the Lord tugging on your heart after that message and after our worship service. If you would, please email or call the number below or email the email address, and you can contact us if you made a decision. Maybe you want to talk with me about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you want to talk to somebody about rededicating your life, or just maybe you want more information about The Caring Place. You want more information about our church and the different ministries that we offer. Whatever the case may be, I want to invite you to respond. I want to thank you for watching, whether it's on Facebook, maybe it's on YouTube, or even our website. No matter where you're watching, we thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you next time. And don't forget, we love you here at The Caring Place. It gathers, grows, and goes all to the glory of God.